Hello everyone, welcome to the 5 lesson of the Crow Panel Pico OHMI display tutorial. In this session, I'll be teaching you how to display ElfGel demos on the Crow Panel board. The entire process will not delve into hardware specifics, but rather focus more on configuring LELE gel and ADALALI ELFGEL demo code, making this lesson quite straightforward. Additionally, since the 2.42.8 and 3.5 boards utilize display drivers provided by the TFTSB library, while the 4.3 board employs display drivers from the Pico DVI library, I'll first demonstrate using the 2.4 board, and then follow up with the 4.3 board. First, let's locate the code for this lesson within the course files. Find the one for the 2.4 display and open it. If you're unsure where to download these course files, you can find the download link in the video description below this video. Alright, once you've opened the code, the first thing you'll see is the header file for the TFT ESPI library. I've already covered the installation and configuration of this library in the second lesson, so I won't repeat it here. If you're still unclear about how to set it up, please make sure to go back and watch the second lesson first. Moving on, you'll see the header file for ElfGel, but since I haven't installed the Ello library yet, I need to do that now. Click on Sketch, then head over to Include Library and locate the Manage Library section. From there, search for ElfGel A. Remember, it's essential that you select version 8.3.11. Please avoid choosing any other version you might be inclined to go for Elfgenine, but for my testing, I've found that Elfgel doesn't offer much flexibility, especially when it comes to the MCU we're currently working with. It's quite resource-intensive, and the functions in LVGL9 are different from those in Elfglate. If you install Elfgenine, you won't be able to compile the examples I provided smoothly. So we don't need the latest version, we just need the one that fits best. Of course, if LVGL9 gets optimized to a satisfactory level in the future, I'll definitely switch to it. After installing the LVGL library, we still need to configure it within the LVGL library or it won't function properly. Click on File, then Open Preferences. This is where you'll find the path to the library directory. Copy this path, then open any folder and navigate to the library directory. Once inside the library directory, you'll see all installed libraries listed here. Locate the ElvGel library and open it. Next, find the file named ElvConf template. Age. Copy it, and then go back to the parent directory, paste it here, and rename it to ElvConf. H. Next, open it with a text editor. We need to modify the content inside. First, we need to change this part to 1 which means enabling this configuration file. When compiling the LFGL library, it will look for this configuration file and decide which codes to compile based on the content in this file. Then, scroll down. Here are definitions related to color depth. Our board uses RGB 565 encoding with a color depth of 16 bits, so this is correct and doesn't need modification. Keep scrolling down and find LVMEM custom, which sets the size of the ElfGel memory pool. However, when we use it, it's not easy to determine based on the project size. So I prefer to have no limit, which will be more convenient. Therefore, I need to set this macro to 1 as well. In this way, it will use the memory allocation function we specified and will not limit the size of the memory pool. Moving on, find the macro elv tick custom. And similarly, you need to set it to 1 to designate the millis function as LVGL's clock. Lastly, we search for demo and locate the section demo usage, which contains several demos that can be called. However, before calling them, we need to set them to 1 first. Currently, I have enabled the widgets demo, which is the same one I'm calling in the Arduino IDE. You can find it in the code. Of course, you can also call other demos, but make sure to enable them in the configuration file first. Otherwise, you'll encounter compilation errors. And when you're not using a demo, remember to disable it, or else it will still be compiled into the code occupying flash space. Okay, that's it. 
Elvgel is now configured. Remember to click save before closing to keep your recent changes. Now back to the Arduino. IDE. Under the ELVGEL header file, you'll notice two more header files, LE examples, H and LV demos, H. If you try to compile the code as it is now, the compiler will throw an error saying it can't find these two header files. Therefore, we need to complete one final step to successfully compile the code. Locate the ELVGEL library, select the demos and examples folders, copy them, then open the SRC folder and paste them there. This way, the compiler will be able to locate the necessary header files. Next, let's analyze the code below. I've already added comments here, so you'll need to declare the appropriate macros based on the board you're using. Then the code will define the screen resolution and the initial touch parameters based on the macros you declared. All right, moving on. What's declared here is the buffer space used by ELVGL. According to the official documentation, the minimum size of this space should be at least one-tenth of your screen resolution. And increasing the space won't significantly improve the speed. Next, the section below pertains to the display interface provided by Elvgel. We need to interface the pixel drawing functions from the TFTSB library with this display interface. First, we acquire the range for pixel drawing, then use the pixel drawing function to draw a pixel at a specific coordinate. ELVGL utilizes this function to render various visuals on the screen. Moving on, ELVGL also offers a touch interface. We simply employ the getTouch function from the TFTSB library, passing the retrieve touch information to LVGL's touch interface. LVGL will take care of the rest after a touch event occurs. I've utilized the serial port to print the touch coordinates. If you don't need this functionality, you can comment it out. Next, let's take a look at the setup function. Firstly, we initialize the serial port and the screen, which we've covered in previous lessons. Then comes the initialization of LVGL. Along with the initialization of the screen's buffer for space, which is the buff one we mentioned earlier. The last parameter is the size of the buffer space, which should match the declaration we made earlier. Following that, we initialize the screen display interface by registering the display interface we mentioned earlier as LVGL's display driver function. Before registration, it verifies the buffer space. Moving on, it's time for the initialization of the LVGL touch interface. Similar to the display interface initialization we just did, we need to register the aforementioned touch interface as LVGL's touch driver function. This should be straightforward to understand. Once all functionalities are initialized, we can then proceed to call LVGL's demo. Lastly, within the loop function, we invoke the LV timer handler function, which is responsible for handling all tasks related to LVGL. It's crucial to keep calling this function continuously with an interval not exceeding 10 minutes or else ELVGEL might crash. All right, that's the analysis of the code for now. Next up, let's upload the code to the board and see how it works. First, connect the board to your computer using a USB-C cable. Then navigate to Tools, select Boards and choose Raspberry PPICO from the list. After that, go back to Tools, select Port, and pick the serial port corresponding to your board. Finally, click on Upload to send the code to the board. Since it includes the ELVGL library, the uploading process can be relatively slow. So please bear with us for a moment. Once the upload is complete, the board will automatically reset, and you'll see the familiar ELVGL demo displayed on the board. It looks very smooth, and the touch response is quite sensitive. Next, I'll demonstrate it again with a 4.3-inch board, but essentially for the smaller sizes, the 3-inch and 4.3-inch ones only differ in display and touch drivers, while most other components are similar. To highlight the differences more vividly, I'll put the code for the smaller sizes beside for comparison. Then let's open the code for the 4.3-inch display. Once opened, the first thing you'll notice is the different display driver and touch driver libraries being used. But ultimately, 
Both will declare an entity for controlling the screen. Following that, when using the LALGA library and its demos, the required header files are the same. Since the 4.3-inch display features a capacitive touchscreen, it doesn't require calibration. Instead, we simply declare its resolution, which is used to calculate the size of the buffer space. Here, I've declared a variable that's not being used left over from when I was coding. It can be deleted. Moving on, scroll down and you'll encounter the display interface functions of ELVGL. These interface functions are essential when utilizing the ELVGL library compared to code for smaller sizes. The only difference lies in the function for drawing points, but the underlying operations remain the same. Hence, the dissimilarities are immediately apparent. Next up, we have the touch interface functions of ELVGL. Here, it's necessary to pass the data acquired by the touch driver to these interface functions. Further down, you'll see the setup function, which initializes the serial port and screen functionalities first. Naturally, there might be excessive color transition segments here, which you can trim down as needed. Additionally, a notable difference is the backlight setup for the smaller three boards. The backlight configurations are preset within the TFTSB library. However, for the 4.3 inch board, you'll need to set it manually in the code. The backlight pin is IO24, and you must set it to low level to enable the backlight scrolling down. Further, we come to the initialization of ELVGL as well as the initialization of the display and touch interfaces. The codes within the loop function are all similar, so I won't go into detail about them. Now, I'm going to upload the code to the board to see how it works. First, click on Tools, then select Electro Crow Panel RP2040DVI from the list of boards. Connect the board to your computer using a USB-C cable. Next, click on Tools again and choose the correct serial port corresponding to your board. From the Port section, finally click Upload to transfer the code. Once the upload is complete, the board will automatically reset, and you'll see the common LVGL demo displayed on the 4.3-inch screen, running smoothly without any lag. That's it for this session. If you find this content helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.